press PFL clear to get rid of it. So pretty good in terms of that's it, in terms of those buttons. The, the last button uh, at the top is mute, and I think we all know what that one does. So we've only had to learn four buttons. Uh, the screen's following everything, uh, and basically you're driving the mixer. Um, so that, that's, the kind of, that's, the, that's the kind of rules now. Um, in the new mixer, we have um, nice channel metering now built in with these nice raised meters. If we press um, some um, playback of something, you can see these light up pretty good. Yeah, you can see the meters are, are, are quite responsive. Uh, we've got gain reduction shown here on, on the second meter. It's a small meter. So as you select up channel one and we bring up um, <coughs> the compressor threshold. And uh, that's, that's not on there, is it? Sorry, sorry. Yeah, you can see as we, as we back off the threshold, start to get gain reduction, and then the meter will light up more here on this one. The small LED at the bottom that's flashing is the gate. Press gate. There's the threshold. As the gate opens, then the light will flash in response to the graph there. So really good channel metering, very, very bright, easy to see in daylight running along the top. But again, they, those can be also the, the RTA spectrum if we... Um, want to run those across to an output. So if we wanted to press mix on an auxiliary, press mix there, send those channels to a mix. Those are all our sends now running to the mix. Press PFL on that channel, graphic EQ. And you can see here, the graphic EQ is running. The meters are now showing um, the um, different signal spectrum analyzer with the peak light showing in red above it. So a really nice tool for working with nice bright meters, easy to see frequencies. Okay. If at any time you have something peaking, like you've got too much input coming in, the meter obviously hits the top uh, six dBs before you reach the, the end room. Um, there's also on the layer button, I think you can see here, there's actually a little red, red light comes on to tell you there's a peak going on in layers. So if you've got something, a channel on a different layer where you're working, if we're working on this layer, you'll see there's a red light coming on to tell us um, something's happening on layer one. So I go to layer one and I can see, ah, yes, uh, press that one there and then I can back these off the gain on, on the channels there directly. The rotary controls. Um, the default probably would be gain. That's what these six buttons here do. So basically, at the top one, press gain. All these rotary controls are great because then I can quickly go through and dial up the gain of the mic, analog mic pre's, whatever, unless it's set to trim, in which case they'll be doing the, the digital path instead. The yellow one does pan, so the rotary controls now will do a pan to the selected mix like, the, um, uh, like um, an auxiliary um, stereo in-ears or for the main mix. Um, then we have four custom rotaries. They can be set up on, on screen to be effect sends or direct trims, those sort of things. So they basically, that could be reverb send. You could set this one up so this one would, would always be a send to an effect or something like that if you wanted to work with the rotaries like that. And then the final button there, sends on faders, bas uh, sorry, sends on rotaries, means that whenever you press mix, the faders always stay on the house mix, and then you will then dial up different sends to effects or things there. And these are color coded as well. So they will, they will respond, the rotaries will respond different colors depending on what mix you're in or what, or what input you're in. Okay, um, so that's the kind of inputs, outputs, layout driving the left-hand screen. Right-hand screen follows the menu. Top one is metering. Um, let's go to bring up the, on the screen as well. Makes it easy. Screen, mirror, right, fly, go. So metering allows you to see all the available metering. Remember, you've got a lot of channels to look at. You've got 128 input channels. You've got 64 buses and all the augs and different configurations, everything. So you can customize some of those and put them in, um, in user pages. 
The first one there, so meters, you have meters there, tabs, there's all the input meters, and you can see that it's touch sensitive, so you can go through all the input metering. So if we get those running again, you can see uh, meters will come up, you can see where there's any activity going on. Um, there we go, we've got some input meters running along the top there. Um, if you've got effects, there's your effects sends, effects returns, depending on what you've set up. There's the mixes, blah, blah, blah. And then you have user one, enter setup to add meters, so press setup. And then you can drag in custom meters, so if you want certain users to have particular meters like effects and that sort of thing, mixes, bring them in here, blah, 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 close. And then that's a custom user page, and that will then become user one, user two, et cetera, et cetera. There's also an RTA running as well. So one of the meters, again, instead of having the GEQ on faders here, you've also got an RTA which will run showing a spectral picture of the, of the noise. And you can also access the pink noise generator and oscillator and stuff from that section as well there. So that's a handy way of getting to the sound tools. Um, we will have more spectral analysis and transfer function windows coming in in later ver versions of firmware. So we've got some exciting stuff coming on the meters page. But for now, you've got the basics like iLive, really easy to customize, et cetera, et cetera. Um, at the bottom here, you can see this is also moves as well. So if it's on inputs, then you can also just scan through. Um, let's see now. Ah. Set up. You can choose the, 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 the metering point, post delay, post compressor, post gate and EQ, and post digital attenuation, and, and the mixed metering source point as well. So you can choose the, where the meters actually happen. Um, Press setup, touch the metering, and then you can choose here what type of metering you have available in the menu. Close it, apply, and down here, now you can scop the meters. There's inputs, those are now all our input channels, 128 in one line, you can actually drag it with your finger. So if this is on a different thing, if that's on mixes, those can those be on inputs. If this is on effects, those are still on showing all our input metering works in real time, um, and then you can change the view, outputs, or go to a different EQ. So again, this is all customized area of the screen, so is this area here, can be customized to follow selected channel, selected mix, highly customizable. Um, the left-hand side of the screen is, def is always tied to the um, scenes, so it shows you, you can actually select a scene there, current selected there, and then press go, and that's how that launches the scenes. You've got all 500 scenes available on that one. You can also put the scene manager, sorry, scene list, um, firing list there, there, or there. Um, the next key down is effects. So this brings up the stereo effects engines, all 16 of them. Basically, you just choose an empty slot, looks like a rack, go to library, choose a uh, an effect and press recall and then you get the controls there. You can also set these controls to follow the, the selected effect. So that is um, effect number five. So you press that there, go into that, um, choose that one, go effect there, drag it in, options, effects one, five, done, apply. So that now will adjust, you can see there as I adjust these controls, that's my delay, my pitch for the pitch doubler. So that one is now locked to effects five. So you can customize that there. So you have 16 effects engines, um, just like iLive and GLD. Um, some of them are tap tempo, you can do that. You've also got a global tap tempo at the top there, which is uh, showing the overall um, BPM sort of settings. Um, yeah, the new effects have beats per minute and, and the sort of crotchets and quavers and different types of beats that you can do with those. A guitar into an effect, direct from the channel following the fader into a delay and then coming back on a stereo return. 
So yeah, uh, all the effects that work like that. You can just scan through each different one. Really great effects. We've got delays, the bucket brigade delay. Uh, there's a new one called Space Echo, which came out in version 1.5 in the GLD Chrome. Pull that one up there, that one's called uh, Echo. You can see that one looks like the standard nice Roland Space Echo, and that will actually do a proper tape echo, spinning, speeding up and slowing down tapes. Some great stuff in there, ADT chorus, subharmonic synthesizer, that's based on a DBX uh, 120. That gives you like synthesized low end. It's fantastic for adding really good low end to uh, dance tracks or bass instruments and that sort of thing. <coughs> Library, we have um, gated reverbs. Uh, the Leslie simulator with the um, valve tube drive and the speed of the speaker rotating. We have Diesa, multiband EQ, uh, dynamic EQ in multiband compressor, transient designer. Fantastic tool, 16 of those. Those could be saved in the scene. So once you set up all your effects, save that one into a scene. If you, uh, if you want to have it recall the same, you can do that. Of course, effects can be inserted on channels. So you can have some of these effects that we've seen here dropped into channels and you've got two insert points on an input and one insert point on an output. So you can have a lot of these effects in actually inserted over mixes as well or into channels. Um, the next page is called IO uh, and you can choose whether that's full screen or not by pressing setup. And then you can see um, f use full screen or not. Uh, you can also have confirm when reassigning. In other words, it will ask you, are you sure? In case, because you are actually patching the main output to the PA, for example. And also, you have a choice of only assign when the assign button's pressed. And that's probably a good thing to do, because that means that um, basically you can't just touch the screen and go, oh, gr crikey, I've just moved it and moved where it's patched. You have to press assign. You press and hold assign left or right, and then touch that button. And now you have, you, you've moved where channel one input is patched on the local rack. And you can drag channels across like that as well. So it's very responsive. It's actually scalable in and out. You have tabs for inputs, outputs, all your local inputs on the back of the surface, the mix rack, the expander port. Everything's written here in the tabs. So you can easily find your way around. So this is what we're saying about having a massive pa patch bay. You have your expander racks, IO ports, I.O. ports could be Dante, Maddy. So basically, you could just say take a load of Dante inputs and patch those across to, um, or Dante outputs to, to the direct outs, etc. Everything could be patching here without actually going through the mixer. If, um, let's see, inner port one, two, inputs, let's, I.O. port in one there. If you touch and hold um, one of the input names, then you get you can name it at that point. So whilst you're doing your patching, it's quite handy because you can go in, give it a color, whatever, and press apply. Now, so as you're doing the patching and you're working out what's being patched away, just touch, touching and holding the name will bring up the, the, the naming dialog. And you can also get to the, um, if it's, it needs a preamp, if you're just patching in a, a, a split, you will also be able to bring up the preamp and adjust the gain as well. So this is a really good, responsive, new kind of touch patching page that we've never had before. Uh, it's, it's really cool. Scenes, um, we've got some pretty standard scene controls which we have in GLD. Basically, the desk will... When you save a scene, it saves everything. That's how it works. Stall everything. Uh, everything's always remembered. So if you're working on something here and you've done a load of different things and you want to remember it all, just press store and it's done. Everything's now stored in scene nine. If you want to name scene nine, basically just give it a name. Press apply. It's got a name up there. You can give it a description. And there it's done. When you want, If you recall that scene and you want it to have a crossfade so it comes in slowly, there's a button up here called crossfade time, pressing it, and you can dial in up to 20 seconds. So when you recall a scene, especially if you're using in-ear monitors, people don't, they're playing away and suddenly something changes, they don't like it. So it's best to sometimes do crossfades, maybe two seconds. So in between songs, 
things change gradually. The faders don't move slowly, but the audio will actually crossfade in the background. So if you want um, crossfade to be active per scene recall, then you touch that tab. Basically, store everything there. 